Mm -hmm. This is the only good. way you should cook Corbina, really. I've cooked Corbina before. You should cook it this way. So, follow his instructions. Master Chef. <laughs> right? <laughs> Welcome back. You guys are in for a treat today. Target species today is going to be Corbina later. We've never caught, actually all of us have never caught. We'll do a quick introduction, but nobody here has eaten Corbina except Alex. He's eaten a Corbina. What did you think about it? Um, it was pretty good. I'd say it's like a mix between halibut and perch. Um, that's like the best way I could describe it, but it was really juicy and really good. I'd recommend it to people who eat perch or surfish. Definitely. We brought a special somebody to prepare the Corbina once we get them, if we get them. We better get them. Man, I'm tired of these wild goose chases, man. <laughs> Edward, you better produce today, man. This is a secret spot. Nah, we're good, we're good. It's, it's been a long time since I've been out with these guys, so it'll be fun, even if we don't catch anything. Speaking of a long time since we fished with him. Yes. Oh, this is the spot, right? This is it, this is it. All right, I'm ready. All right, so Dad's with us. Ian's with us today. What's, What's up? up? We're gonna slay him today. That's right. Hopefully. Where'd That's the plan. Going? Where'd Master Blasta go? <laughs> Mario's already fishing way over there. So Mario's here too. First two hours of fishing, we're gonna be targeting halibut. Halibut are in the same water. And then once the sun starts getting up and we can get better visibility into the water and start sight fishing these Corbina, we're gonna do it. We got sand crabs on deck and we got Bloodworms on deck, courtesy of Papa Leroy. That's what a bloodworm looks like. Saltwater worm. Let's go. And they bite. Oh, and they bite. Oh yeah, they do. Just gotta watch out for the business end. Oh, there it comes. Perfect. If you're new to the channel, we like sharing things. We like sharing tips, strategies, and just documenting our fishing trips. Definitely subscribe if you haven't. Oh no, it's a spot for a yellow fin croaker. Oh, Leroy's got a yellow fin croaker. On the blood worm. On the blood worm. Not big enough. Let's see it. But you can eat these too. Yellow fin croaker. They're kind of, they're kind of akin to the, the Corbina. Well, that was a waste of a blood worm. Oh, it's got something bigger. Five minutes in though, not bad. It's 6.45, 8.45, we'll switch it up. Ooh, all clear. Oh! Probably. Yeah, little, little baby cow. Get out here. Jerk bait or drop shot? Jerk bait. Dang. Let's see that thing. Woo. That's a good one. Yeah. Sick. Look at the eyes. I know. Awesome fish. First little calico from the surf. Shoo. Alex just got a flatty. Oh, it's a good one. Solid one, dude. Yeah. Yeah, nice rock. I'm just gonna end it. So just throw him all Here, over. Here, I'll, I'll hold its tail. I'll hold its like tail. right there. You can see his tail. Yeah, he grabbed him. Yep. That was it. Nice job, dude. Hell yeah. Now you guys can make fish fried rice. Oh, you saw that one? Well, yeah. No, you brought stuff, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I cooked that up. Yeah. All right, we're switching it up. Gave the halibut a couple, couple hours. So we're gonna start with a size four mosquito hook. About three foot of six pound liter. You could go either six or four. They're using four. I think six is really gonna be close enough. 
to an eighth ounce weight with a bead, with a tiny swivel. We're gonna go ahead and hook the sand crab through the back, just like that. Natural presentation. I went ahead and did a quick Instagram poll, like any tips on Corbina. Everyone says that they're super shy. So you gotta stay back from the water. <laughs> and they're line shy so that's why you have to use six pound or less tests some people even use two pound tests ridiculous light wire hook sand crabs are the deal so let's see if we can't hook up so right now i'm kind of blind casting i want to try around those boiler rocks right there geez catching corbina has uh, proved to be harder than it looks <laughs> that's for sure they're totally feeding right in the shallows. It's high tide right now. There's one right there, oh my God. Ooh, there you go, there you go. I don't know if that's a Corbina. Ha, ah, it's a perch. It's a decent perch. Decent perch. Well, I guess I'll take it. Dang it. I don't know. I think I'm not cut out for this Corbina game. All right, just an update. <laughs> Man, we've been fishing almost four hours now. We got a few Corbina. Alex caught them both, and he's got another one. Jeez. He's standing out on a rock, and he's dropping mussels in front of him with like no weight, nothing. That's Corvina. Got him. Hooked. Got him on a mussel, huh? Oh yeah. They love the mussel. Like it doesn't compare to like sand crab or anything else. They just inhale it. Look at that. They, that that's so. Look how well hooked that is. Oh jeez. They just eat it. But I'm sight fishing them off like this little boiler rock, and I cast right in front of them, and then they'll just go over it and inhale it. Dude. Yeah. Another one. Damn. This one's nice. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Hell no. Dude, you're a, this guy. We're going to nickname you Montauk. This is what they do uh, on the East Coast for striped bass. They stand out, they like swim to their spots. Oh, I got one too. Oh, he came off. No, he's still there. I got something. <laughs> oh, damn it. Let's take a look at this guy. Ah, oh, that is a nice one. Dude, that is a nice one. Oh my God. I'll tell you, it ain't coming off. Swallow that. <laughs> you are a beast. I know these guys. And they're really tasty, right? They're pretty good, I'll tell you that. They're All right. Shout out to you, Mike. Mike Labukai, Mike's Tackle Box. Ugh. Hooking it up with the Pliny. Pretty stoked for this. Pretty freaking stoked. Okay, <laughs> guys. Is that everything you imagined it would be though? Yeah, it's just a normal fish. I mean, you know, it's, there's nothing different about it. It's the same anatomy in almost, almost all fish. You know, you have a backbone, you have pin bones, which are your lateral line. So, you know, it's not, not any different than any other fish. 
you're scoring it? Yeah, just a little bit for the flavor of the sauce gets in to the meat a little bit because we're going to cook this skin side down. Man, they got tough skin. But we're going to make a make a sauce. I don't have a spoon, so I'm just going to scrape it with the back of my mouth. About a cup. Yeah, two cups of soy sauce. This is a special vinegar I was telling you about. It's a, for sushi making, it's very expensive stuff, but it's really good. And what it is, is uh, it has the, the rice from the sushi, or excuse me, the sake making uh, uh, process. It's called koji. And then uh, what they do is they mix that and they ferment it with vinegar. And it comes out, and sometimes when you go to a really nice sushi bar like Taku used to work at, like an omakase restaurant, they will use this vinegar to season their rice and it gives it like a brown kind of color. So we call this, actually we call it red vinegar, but very expensive, but good. It's real subtle. It's kind of thin. We're gonna do the end. putting the sliced ginger on top of the filet right now. This is going to be the aromatic and uh, gives it a little bit of flavor during the steaming process. Put some of the marinade over the filets. Well, it's not actually a marinade. It's, it's a sauce that it's gonna, the fish is going to steam in. Okay, and it kind of marinates a little bit while we're waiting for the steamer to kick up. Get another preparation done. And what we'll do is we'll put these on after the fish steams, and then uh, and then we'll do the last step, which you'll see gives it. Uh, we'll we'll kind of make the aromatics, which this is even though it's a pepper, it's not an aromatic per se, but it does add a lot of flavor. curl up in the water. Kind of open up a little bit. Put the pan in the steamer. Try not to burn yourself. Okay. And this, luckily we have a double layer steamer. So we're gonna put the, we're gonna put the thinner pieces on top. Just, whoops. Just because we can. Ow, ow, it's hot. And then we're gonna steam these dudes until yeah. they're done. We're gonna make it hot, but we're not gonna make it like, like frying hot. More like 200 degrees somewhere in there. So it's gonna be hot, but not to the point where it's gonna, you know, fry anything. There you go. It smells absolutely amazing. Spicy, it's gonna be spicy. Almost, see it starting to foam? Little bubbles, it's almost there. We're gonna catch the ASMR sizzle. If there was smell-o-vision, you would have gotten a, a, a huge whiff of the ginger, the onions, the sesame oil just smells so sweet. And uh, Leroy said aromatics, but aromatics doesn't even begin to describe that. Have you had 
Corbina before? No, I have not. This is my oh first my time God. ever. I don't really like fish, but I think halibut is one of the greatest tasting fish in my opinion. So I'll be eating that. This big boy's happy. <laughs> Look at that. Got some nice spice on there. Some extra pepper plant and salsa on the rice. Mm. So the sauce is pretty freaking exciting. That's the sauce right there. Perfectly, Roy. Mm. <laughs> you gonna throw this on the side? <laughs> Tastes totally different. I think it's all in the sauces and the different spices, all that. The Asian cuisine makes it taste great. I just use the breadcrumbs and salt, and that's usually the way to go, but this is like top of the line. Really good fish. I think I'm gonna be catching more corbina and cooking it. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. The ginger seeps right into the meat. Like, it's thoroughly inside. The method of steaming is really what infused the flavors into that fish. Mm -hmm. Was it the only good. way you should cook Corbina, really? I've cooked Corbina before. You should cook it this way. So, follow his instructions. Master Chef. Man. And then that onion is not just a garnish, it's a flavor adder right there. Notice how the the serrano peppers didn't even touch the marinade. They weren't in the marinade. They weren't anything. They were just on top. And then when I poured the hot oil, all the flavor from the, the serranos went right into the fish because my lips are burning. Mm -hmm. And it didn't even touch. It didn't even touch the fish. Texture-wise, it is a little bit firmer than perch, but it is kind of right in between striped bass too. Oh yeah, it's comparable. You could do this really one. comparable. Do this recipe on striped bass too. It's flaky. And Leroy brought it up earlier, not on camera, but it's just a little bit not cooked all the way. But hopefully that lets you guys see the, the texture. But at the end of the day, it's a white meat fish, so it's going to take any flavor that you guys infuse into it. So fried, I'm sure is really good. But this ginger style. It's epic. If you guys wanted to know what Corbino was like and you guys wanted to see an awesome dish prepared by Leroy, hopefully you got what you were looking for. Corbina suck. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up on the Corbina. You did? Here we go. Got one, got one. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. That's a yellow fin. Yellow fin croaker. Nice fish. I don't know the legal size on these. Leave it in the comments below. I guess I'll find out by the time I read them, but do it anyway. <laughs> Benefiting from Alex's hard work. Oh, oh, there's a little piece, you see it? Oh, he did grab a little, little piece. piece and gonna go. <laughs> Keeping comfy, Mario? <laughs> Just relaxing, <laughs> living the dream. He was, he was like, he was like, what do you want to say to Mike? Hey, thanks for the beers, Mike, but I never got any. <laughs> Dang, sorry. Got it, Mike. I got it. <laughs> Thank you for being DD. I got you. You're the man. Any day. <laughs>